are one of the more underappreciated pieces of hardware in the gaming world, and we get why. In and of themselves, they don't directly impact gameplay performance, or at least not overtly. However, as sweet as the temptation of pouring all of your resources into the CPU, GPU, and RAM sounds, skimping out on the motherboard can come back to bite you in the long run. Of course, certain builds and budgets will demand that you buy a motherboard which features only the bare necessities, but luckily finding a motherboard that can fit the rest of your pre-existent hardware like a glove is no Herculean task. In fact, we'll tell you all you need to know before buying a motherboard in this very video. And as you can see, this video isn't really all that long. So without any further ado, let's begin. The first and most important step in picking a motherboard has got to be the socket. Regardless of whether you already have a CPU picked out or not, you need to know which CPU you'll be using as not all CPUs can fit every motherboard. Thankfully, the situation isn't as unforgiving as it once was since both Intel and AMD now use their own standardized sockets for most of their CPUs. Intel uses the LGA1151 socket and AMD uses the AM4 socket. Now, this isn't to say that there aren't CPUs that don't fit into this mold, like the AMD Threadripper CPUs that use their own tier 4 socket, while the Core i9 and the Xeon CPUs use the LGA2066 socket. But if you need a CPU specifically for gaming, then you shouldn't really even be considering these. There's a link in the description to our video where we highlight the best CPUs currently available, so make sure to check it out if you're wondering why you shouldn't be buying these premium CPUs for your high-end gaming rig. But we digress. In any case, you'll want to at least know whether you're on Team Red or on Team Blue before you make the purchase. We won't be advocating for either in this video as that topic merits a video on its own, which has already been made and is also in the description. But we will say that AMD is a bit more consistent with their AM4 socket. We already know that the third generation Ryzen CPUs will use the same AM4 socket that all Ryzen CPUs so far have used. But chances are that the 10th gen core CPUs will use a revamped LGA1151 version 3 socket. And these revamps have traditionally not been backwards compatible, in case you were wondering. So if you're looking to buy a motherboard right now, but you want to leave an open path for easy upgradability, then an AMD motherboard may very well be the safer investment. Slightly less important than the socket, but still pretty paramount, we have the chipset. And the chipset does many things. It determines whether you'll have access to some of the more advanced features like multi-GPU support or the storage-oriented StoreMI or Optane technologies, and it also determines whether or not your motherboard will support overclocking, as well as how many ports, connectors, and slots it can have. We won't be going over all the currently available chipsets as that would take forever, but there are links in the description for lists for both AMD and Intel chipsets along with all of their features, so check that out if you're curious. Of course, it goes without saying that the more advanced chipsets carry with them a heftier price tag. Once again, we feel obligated to mention that AMD is a bit more consistent when it comes to chipset compatibility. The AM4 socket was designed with future-proofing in mind, and as such, you can put any AM4 CPU in any AM4 motherboard and it will work, regardless of the chipset. Intel, on the other hand, has done some pin rearranging recently, so the newer version of the LGA1151 socket is actually incompatible with pre-Coffee Lake CPUs. Just something to keep in mind. Picking out the right motherboard can be quite daunting for beginner builders, and part of the reason is that there are so many specs that come in forms of various ports, slots, and connectors that they feel overwhelmed and don't want to make the wrong decision. Now, the good thing is that so long as you've got the socket and the chipset you want, you're more than likely to have everything you'll need regarding the other specs in whichever motherboard you decide to buy. But that doesn't mean we're not going to go over all the ports, slots, and connectors real quick and explain what they do. The ones that take the cake have got to be the PCI Express slots. These are used for GPUs and other miscellaneous expansion cards like sound cards, capture cards, and so on. No matter how large the graphics card, it will never require more than a single PCI Express slot, but some cards can end up obscuring the access to a neighboring slot just by their sheer size. Then there are the RAM slots. These are pretty self-explanatory. The SATA 3 is one of the two storage relevant specs, and it's used for HDD and NAND SSD storage, while the M.2 is used for NAND 
and and more and the more advanced NVMe SSD storage. And in case you're wondering why your motherboard has HDMI, VGA, DVI-D, or a display port on the back when you've already got these on a graphics card, well, it's for integrated graphics. As far as USB ports are concerned, there are plenty to choose from, but these are the most common ones. USB 2.0 is a low bandwidth port, but it's more than good enough for keyboards and mice, so if you're running low on USB ports and you want to economize bandwidth, don't be hesitant to plug the mouse and keyboard into USB 2.0s. They don't really need anything faster. USB 3.1 Gen 1 is a high-speed USB that you'll use for more advanced peripherals. But then there's also USB 3.1 Gen 2. This iteration of the USB interface is naturally faster than Gen 1, but the thing is, it's so fast that many peripherals still don't make full use of it. It's a bit like having a race car in a high-traffic urban area with plenty of schools. Sure, the car can go fast, but you won't be driving it fast. So don't be discouraged if your motherboard has only one or two of these ports, or even none. Of course, some older mice and keyboards use the old PS2 connector. That's literally all it's good for, so don't be surprised if there is a connector on your motherboard that isn't doing anything. And as for audio, you have the analog audio jack and the optical audio support. The former is used for most wired headphones, microphones, and speakers, while the latter is used by more advanced audio solutions like surround systems or sound bars. And finally, there's the form factor, which basically boils down to how big you want your motherboard to be. There's more to it than that, of course, but most of the differences arise from the expanded size of the larger form factors and what they can accommodate. For gamers, the three form factors that you need to take into consideration are Mini ITX, Micro ATX, and ATX. Mini ITX format is the smallest, usually capable of only housing two RAM slots and a single PCI Express by 16 slot that you need for the graphics card. But contrary to what you may think, these are not the most affordable motherboards around. In fact, they're among the most expensive ones. So we only recommend Mini ITX motherboards to those who are looking to build the most compact gaming PC. Micro ATX motherboards actually tend to be the most affordable ones and they balance this price with a good array of features. If you're building a budget gaming PC, this is definitely the way to go. As for ATX, this is the form factor that will have all of the features you'll need for a high-end PC. Just keep in mind that ATX motherboards with more advanced chipsets can get quite pricey. If you want a more detailed comparison of different form factors, we suggest checking out our video where we do just that. But that will about do it for this video. Normally this is where we'd include a whole list of products and go over them one by one, but motherboards are a bit cut and dry so we figured we'd omit this. If you want a detailed review of the best motherboards in 2019, check out the full article where you'll find just that. However, in case you have some Bfoot articles and refuse to read them, we will leave you with some model names to help guide your search in the right direction. If you're on the red team, then we feel that the MSI B450M Pro M2 is the best budget option for you. If you're looking for the best value, you'll find it in the Asus ROG Strix B450F. And if you're looking for the most premium AMD motherboard around, then definitely check out the Asus ROG Strix X470F. And in case blue is more your color, we suggest the MSI H310M Gaming Plus for budget builders, the MSI Z390A Pro for those who are looking for the best value, and the MSI MPG Z390 Gaming Edge AC in case you want the best of the best and money's not an issue. Again, you can find a detailed overview of each of these motherboards in the article below. And that's it for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it, and consider sharing it if you think this is something people ought to know. Also, we've already got more of these videos in the pipeline, so click on the bell icon in case you don't want to miss any of them. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.